Okay, so I've done a couple of parallel view. I've I've done a couple of watches of adaptations of thrillers, suspense movies, horror movies on this channel previously. Um, I did one of Seance on a Wet Afternoon, and it's 2000 adaptation Seance. Most recently, I think there should be a video on the different versions of M. And I thought I'd give it a shot with one of my favorite horror movies. I really love Jacob's Ladder, so when I saw that there was a 2019 remake, I was a bit hesitant. Um, I don't think that this will be good. I assume it won't be, but I'd love to see what how it handles adapting the source material, if it even does. I just saw in a little snippet that it said that it's an homage to uh, Jacob, Jacob's Ladder and not necessarily a, a, a direct... Um, direct remake of it. So yeah, this will be interesting. I am hesitant, but cautiously optimistic, not necessarily to see if this movie turns out good, but to see what choices it makes. I, uh, I can't really justify this. I would recommend you checking out Jacob's Ladder, though. It's a great movie. So yeah, let's watch the 2019 adaptation of Jacob's Ladder. <laughs> And before we get started, don't forget to click the like button and subscribe for more old, obscure, and arthouse films. Um, and, uh, I guess, soulless Hollywood remakes of old, obscure, and arthouse films. Yeah, let's watch Jacob's Ladder. Hmm. One of the, you know, most interesting aspects, one of the most recognizable aspects of the first version is certainly the um, art direction, the design of the movie, which I imagine took a long time and drew from a lot of different sources of, in of inspiration. So with what I will assume is a shorter uh, production schedule for this movie, I wonder how they will, if they will make similar choices or what the design philosophy of this movie will be. So we are doing the Iraq War. And this is like, <laughs> if anything, this is making me worry that this will be more akin to the 2005 remake of The Manchurian Candidate than it will to Jacob's Ladder. Ready to be a daddy. I've been gone for eight months. Baby Happy doesn't even come close to how I feel right now. 36, Mets. Boss, please. Why is she not masked? <laughs> I can't operate on this this man. He's my son. We miss daddy. Do we miss daddy? Cause you're already dead. Work stuff, but I know much better now. It's interesting to see how they utilize, like, the, it's not the Iraqi war, but the Afghan war, Afghanistan war, um, as, like, a template over the Vietnam war in the original version. The original, because the original version is playing on tropes associated with the Vietnam war of, like, drug use, of governmental experimentation programs, of post-traumatic stress disorder. So, um, while those things in bits could be applied to the Afghanistan war. I don't think it says has the same kind of like cultural associations. So I wonder if they are going to like um, make those connections beat for beat in the same way. Hey. I wonder where they live. They don't. They don't live in New York City. You good? Listen, if you uh, you find any more wounded warriors, people that need help, then. I might have some more ammo for the fight. Nurse! Get a doctor in here now! Easy, easy. Good, good. Let's get a gun. Let's get ready. Go. It's the secret drug! Jacob. This is very, 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 very funny. Uh, because... In terms of the plot construction, this doesn't resemble Jacob's Ladder at all in comparison to it resembling the 2005 adaptation of Manchurian Candidate. Uh, that's weird. Jacob's 
Because this is like exactly the plot of Venturian Candidate 2005. Do I know you? Paul Rudiger. I was an operator in your brother's team. We it's did an American David Thewlis. Is it about my brother? He's here in Atlanta. Excuse me? I think. Isaac's been dead for over a year. You think this guy was on anything? So are Isaac and Paul gonna end up being the same person? These guys are taking something. He doesn't really have a brother. How else do you escape these fucking nightmares? He has a dissociative identity disorder. And he's talking to a psychiatrist about his dead brother or his missing brother when he's actually him. How are you doing? Good. Or not Paul, Jacob. Good. I get it. That's a... No episodes? It's a Bible thing. Jacob and Isaac. It's just that our relationship was complicated. Two halves of the same coin. And that's nice. We actually get, actually get to see some a little bit of Atlanta. Good, good. This is genuinely what I was looking for a little bit more from this. Although I have my doubts as to <laughs> this character, this Jacob Singer using the subway. Okay, cool. We are we are doing the, the the body horror stuff. Good. I was worried that that wouldn't be present. Sincerely have my doubts that he took that he took the train. Seems like a car kind of guy. Guy lives in a two-story house. He does not take the subway to work. Isaac! Oh. Okay, so is this about, like, drug dependence in Atlanta? That's an interest. I mean, that, that would be an interesting adaptation. Mr. Singer. Mr. Singer. What are you doing here? No, no, no. I, I, I gotta get home. I gotta get home. Uh, They're after you. Your brother's in trouble. No. He's here, right now. I can show you. Uh, this is not important, but the way they cut those two scenes, those two shots, there were people, a bunch of people walking around on the shot on Jacob, and then when it switched over to um, Hunziker, Rudiger, um, there was nobody walking around. That's when I found the ladder. He's down there in those tunnels, and it's not safe. Your brother needs your... That's like literally a crime. Nobody stops that woman. A man was thrown in front of a train. Someone threw a garbage bag onto the tracks. A conductor nearly had a stroke, but no sign of anything else. I see. So it's like more things going on in his head. You think I'm making this up? Is that what you think? Uh -huh. Thanks for your time. I do wonder though if he's actually like a trauma surgeon. That would be a huge swerve. I don't know if the uh narrative can support that but if he's imagining himself as a trauma surgeon but he's actually one of these um homeless vets who are traveling around in the network underground that would make more sense as to why he keeps on connecting like going to these subways because he's actually um another unhoused individual and he's having a psychotic episode okay put a pin in that you get questions in your head then, if that's the case. Does he have a phone right now? Is what he's holding actually a phone? If he doesn't have a phone, how can he see? Is he using a flashlight? We'll see, we'll see. I... I do get body horror as a genre. I like body horror as a genre. I don't like when it's, this is like too real world-ish for me to like be totally comfortable with it. Behold, the ravages of age. Where it's like, um, look at these unhoused people with, uh, you know, like missing eyes or like uh, appendages and stuff, um, malformities. Jacob. I'm a little bit like, that's okay. not 
It's okay. not cool in 2019 to say, like, these are things to be afraid of. You should be afraid of homeless people. I understand that in this character, the framework of this character's mind, based on my hypothesis that he's afraid of homeless people, the unhoused, because he actually is, and he's trying to disassociate from his own conditions. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. I really don't see Jesse Williams as a homeless guy. He really looks like he's been on the streets for a while, with his perfectly manicured hair. <laughs> God, she's gonna fuck your brother so hard. We thought you were dead. Maybe I am. Maybe I was. <laughs> Please don't write that. <laughs> Screenwriters, I'm begging you. I, I know you didn't. I know an exec told you to revise it and then you added it in in haste. Find a way to not have <laughs> execs tell you to keep those lines in. Keep bleeding. I mean, look at how that hoodie hugs Jesse Williams' body. It's a well-tailored, unhoused gentleman right there. Oh, it's a scene from Jacob's Ladder. Done with a different character, but what are you going to do? This is why they wanted to do this movie. To get Jesse Williams shirtless in a bathtub. That's the entire reason this movie was made. Uh, <laughs> there in the fields for a gladiator. If there, if there are wheat fields in in Georgia, my apologies, mea culpa. But <laughs> where do these people live? I love that place. Full hole, fishing hole, barely any fish in it. How old are they though? This is an interesting, um, uh, diegetic, I guess, aspect to this movie. Or, I, I guess, like, perspective aspect of this movie, where we just heard uh, voices in Isaac's head. But earlier we had actually heard those voices in Jacob's head. And it makes you, like, it, it, it's like an incongruity, because you're like, who's the POV character in this movie? The voices should be emanating from the uh, character that we as an audience are identifying through. So it should be from Jacob's perspective. If, you were, if you're hearing voices through Isaac's perspective, it kind of breaks the, um, the narrative structure of the movie. And I get also that, like, if these two characters are the same character, that internally makes sense. But... If we haven't explored that idea yet in the movie, then it, it's it's like um, it it's a stylistic inconsistency. Yeah, I've been in sessions all morning. I um, uh, I need to talk to you. No, Jacob. Oh, this is the insert character for Danny Aiello, R.I.P. Okay. in uh, the 1990 version. Um, can we catch up again next session? He's not in a good way, though. Yeah, the way that he's, like, he's handling things, Jacob, it's giving me a sense What's that, uh, this I, is I him, like, Faces. um, comforting somebody who's having a psychotic break. But he needs professional help. He should come in. He thinks he's going to hell. Jacob, the only thing that burns in hell are sinners. Is yourself that refuses to let go. Uh -huh. Once you made your peace, devils, the angels freeing you from this earth. He's not telling your brother that. He's telling you that. I, I'm actually not sure why they've introduced this brother aspect to it. Because, like, I, I don't know. I get that it's, like, about duality and stuff, and they are performing two different functions in this. But, like, if they added the brother solely for the reveal that, uh, they're actually the same person, that would be, um, I think to a certain degree at least, unnecessarily complicating the, the plot of what is essentially a very straightforward, uh, narrative. I don't mean straightforward in terms of the, like, levels upon the levels that are in Jacob's Ladder, but I mean straightforward in terms of the scene-to-scene -scene actions of Jacob's Ladder is pretty simple to route out. It's like, he has an episode, he calms down, he has an episode, he calms down, he has an episode, and calms down. And there's no, like, real interaction. There's no much more complicated interaction with, like, him having a lost brother he's rediscovered. And stuff like that. He, there's still, like, a, um, there's still, like, a, 
like a military or government conspiracy and stuff, but it doesn't like overwhelm, it doesn't dominate the narrative. I'd love to know if this is somehow engaging in like <sighs> like race in Atlanta, if this is some sort of comment on um like black excellent like black affluence in Atlanta and it's like refusal and it's like I don't know, the conservative politics of the area or the refusal of the affluent black uh, citizens of At Atlanta suburbs to engage with the um, okay. homeless or disenfranchised black populace of um, the metropolitan area. I very, very loosely, sorry, I, I don't really have a strong grasp on I kind of have the a particulars of that. But uh, um. That would be interesting if that's something that's being incorporated into this narrative. It targets traumatic memories. The vets, they call it the latter. The VA had been prescribing it for some time to fucking FDA or a bunch of pussies. <laughs> Is that your People pharmaceutical opinion? Because of it. Your brother. He's alive. I seen him. I don't know. Is there a Bud Light in that office? <laughs> Let me take this. Just for safekeeping. Every single actor has been ca has been coached to give him like the concerned look talk. The this is a man who's having an, a psychotic episode look. Hey, baby. What are you doing? Oh, oh open up kiss! Is it off what are you doing? I need you to grab some clothes and, and an overnight bag. Jake, what is going Sam, on? Please, I just need you and Gabe to be somewhere safe. Someone broke into my house, and I'm just finding out about it now. Oh, they're divorced. There's a family here. This is a divorce conversation that they're having. I know, Sam, but this is serious. Trust me. They are already separated. <laughs> they have been separated. <laughs> Whatever you're talking about, drugs or whoever is involved, I can't do this, so yeah, I'll go to the hotel with Gabe. Okay, so maybe his brother is alive, but they're they've like they've switch roles. He's he's actually Jacob. He's actually Isaac, or he's the, actually the one who's homeless and stuff. And so they're not necessarily two sides of the same coin. But this is something that uh, he's he's imagining he would live the life that his brother was living because his brother got the wife and his brother got the children. Okay, I think that also makes sense, and that's probably a bit clearer. I also don't know why it's happening, though, but whatever. We don't need to worry about that. Isaac. 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 <laughs> oh. This is just making me feel like the Dark Knight right now. <laughs> he looks like he's about to go fight the Joker. Well, it actually looks like the Hong Kong sequence. He looks like he's about to go uh, kidnap Lao. Zadrax even got that, like, Hans Zimmer, James Newton Howard thing going for it. Oh, she's here. I... I don't even know what to say about the art direction. <laughs> There's really nothing to say. It's just boilerplate. It's not... I was hoping this movie would make bad decisions, but interesting decisions, but... It's made expedient decisions. It's it's a rush job. It's almost impressively mediocre. Oh, it's the asylum scene. Does it make you see things that aren't there? What are you talking about, Jake? Why would you ask me that? I don't take HDA. It's not FDA approved. I really hope he like draw, dies in a train accident in the Afghanistan sequence because there's so much train imagery in this movie and I don't know why in particular. Maybe it's a hallmark of Atlanta. But like I want there to be some sort of th thematic reinforcement to why there's so many train sequences in this movie. <laughs> these guys, these guys, they, they threatened me to kill me. 
Okay, maybe we need to call the police. <laughs> <laughs> Isaac, your wife is being accosted by your brother. This is a situation where you need to draw boundaries. Isaac, please. <laughs> this is not safe. <laughs> your brother's gonna murder your I'm wife. Fucking in on it. You don't and while it. you won't I'm necessarily be responsible, us. you will, will have not taken what proper that precautions. What is that noise? What noise, Jake? The clicking noise. Are you fucking my wife? You fucked my wife. What? What the fuck are you doing? Hey, hey. Jacob. What's happening? Huh? Stop it! <laughs> Go. Go now and leave me! Masquerade. Paper faces on parade. Masquerade, hide your face so the world will never find you. I have a hard time explaining how strange it is to choose to adapt a, a, a work that's like in its construction, like a reference to like biblical imagery, to like you know the guy who works in this images lab? of heaven and hell. Excuse me. To demons and possession and um, like a hidden world, a hidden reality, and incorporate none of that into your art direction, into the design of your movie. I like which part of Jacob's Ladder did these filmmakers think would be appealing to an audience? Was it the name? Why can't you just, just be happy for her, for both of us? <laughs> I don't care how happy you are. I just think about how it should have been mine. Are we supposed to know who that is? Uh, I do not everyone. recognize that Maybe white man. Have, uh, one more speaker. <laughs> is that the homeless guy? I came up here for. I came up here to make a toast to true. Love. Love. I had her first. I do remember that. <laughs> Gonna go murder them in that house. Gonna take the subway to do it. How'd you get in? The window. <laughs> it's a weird movie. I couldn't find my key. You don't have keys. The important thing is now. We can finally no. be together. I see. It was all my fault. Jacob. Hey, hey, hey. When did you... Jesus, where the hell have you been, Jacob? She's my wife. You fuck my, my wife. My wife! What? Jane, listen. We love a good cuck story. You're not married to Sam. I were never married to Sam. Oh, oh, no, no. Oh my god. They tried to hold on to this for so long. This is going to be the big reveal. Tell him. Jake, I'm telling you. And I am telling you. I'm not going. Jacob, you're the best man I've ever known. Jake. Jacob, there's no way I can ever go. No, 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 no. There's no way. No, no. There's no way I'm living without you. Jake, stop. And you, and you, and you. You're gonna love me. Oh, they choose to do that shot here? After so long? I'd say that most of the choices that this movie made were like generic, not necessarily bad, just not enthusiastic. But this choice of making the two the story about these two brothers is bad. It's unnecessarily complicating a movie that is not improved by its inclusion at all. How close is this subway station? 
white women. I'm sure they're gonna reveal her to be like um, Middle Eastern when they actually do this, but she she has been kind of coded as white throughout this entire movie. This is Singer. I got eyes on the target. Permission to engage. And all the dead men will appear to you as demons or angels, depending on whether you can let them go. This late in the game, decide to put in the unnecessary nudity. This late in the game, 80 minutes into this movie, you would think they would introduce this stuff earlier. This late in the game, a sex scene that adds nothing to the movie. What am I even supposed to say to this? She has fucking angel wings. But they're demon wings. She's Sephiroth. There's like no character to the to the design of this movie at all. White women do be leading you down the path to hell though. What was nice? What was it? Your life. When I got to leave it. <laughs> Uh, uh. Hey, hey, stop! Why are you trying to kill me? What? No! Trying to kill, trying to kill me. I was hoping for a second he was doing a different accent. That would have just been the cherry on top. You're reconstructing the CA in this shithole. I'm improving it. Is is actually what I'm doing. No one was helping these guys. No one. No one helping you. No one cares. Is this guy British? I'm, I'm, Has no he been British this entire something. time? The only one who's trying to help. I'm the one who's trying to find a cure. This guy's been British this entire time. <laughs> what are you talking about? What are you talking about? Oh, man. Right, the accent you. coach was not on set this, these days. He's back in Afghanistan, ready to die, finally. Oh. Come on, take him back to Afghanistan. Don't make this the ending. If, if this was actually like real life, if there was actually a drug called HTA that was being chemically engineered by a rogue pharmacist who wanted to help disabled vets, traumatized vets, that would be such a stupid story. Okay, so she was the angel of death the entire time. That's an interesting take, I guess. Pour Bud Light out. One for you, one for them. <laughs> that was bad. Go watch the original. That was bad. <laughs>